Let us begin this message with prayer. Lord Jesus, we honour you as the one who can meet our needs, whether emotional, physical, spiritual or mental. You alone are God and you reign in victory, bringing freedom, deliverance and healing in your hands. Your power stretches across space and time. And in this moment, we nestle in your glorious presence and wait upon you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Our Bible reading comes from Matthew 5, verses 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Amen. We've been working through the Beatitudes over the last weeks, and today we come to Matthew 5, verse 6, where we will explore the theme of spiritual hunger and thirst. The word hunger denotes intense desire and need, but the word thirst seems to express that even more. And certainly people who live in desert lands would properly understand the pangs of thirst. Everyone experiences discontentment in life. Jesus saw and still sees people hungering. But unfortunately, we don't always hunger after the right things. And we certainly don't always hunger after God. We can be offended by someone and instead of taking God's path of forgiveness, we may seek to take revenge on them or hold a grudge. But what we don't realize is that our grudges hurt others as much as they hurt ourselves. You know, the story is told of a young man who had a terrible falling out with a neighboring farmer. One night in an act of cruel vengeance, this young man crept through the neighbor's fields, sowing seeds of persistent, virulent weeds. The weeds sprung up and no amount of effort could eradicate them. Years passed and eventually this man, this young man, fell in love with the farmer's daughter. He married her and at length the young man inherited the farm. He later confessed that he had spent the rest of his life reaping what he had sown in one angry act of folly. You know, the question for us is, what are we doing wrong that may eventually hurt us? There are times when we do hunger, perhaps not for the glint of gold or for wealthy possessions, but where we actually do hunger for Jesus Christ. A person who thirsts for Jesus Christ will find joy. Perhaps that is something that you need to hear today. It is a positive hunger. Psalm 17 verse 15 puts it like this. As for me, I will behold your face in righteousness. Pursuing Jesus' face and his righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I am awake with your likeness. What do we mean by righteousness? Righteousness has two basic meanings. The first one is to be right with God, to be in a right relationship with God. And the second meaning of righteousness is living right, living in a right relationship with God with others, but also with ourselves. That's important, to have peace within ourselves about the way that we are living. How can we know if we are hungering and thirsting for right living or for righteousness? Well, firstly, we will experience dissatisfaction with our spiritual condition. This means that we will feel a yearning, 
uh, for more spiritual growth. We will feel a desire for greater spiritual maturity or for an increased level of faith in our lives. That's one way of knowing that we are pursuing righteousness. The second way of knowing that we are pursuing righteousness or right living is that we will find ourselves desiring to see goodness exercised in our homes, in our workplace, in our schools, in our churches, and in fact, a desire to see goodness throughout the world. That's also when we know that we are seeking righteousness. We may find ourselves, in fact, angry at inequality. We can know that we are on the right path when we have a sense that we want justice for all people. Now, who will be fully satisfied according to this beatitude? Who does that apply to? Well, it's so reassuring to know that it is not the person who has attained righteousness that will find fulfillment. That is not what the verse says. Rather, it is reassuring to know that it is the person who hungers for righteousness that will find fulfillment. Psalm 42 says this, As the deer pants for streams of living water, so my soul longs for you. Blessedness comes to the person who, despite their failings, despite their fallenness, still pursues a desire for goodness. In Henry Nowen's words, it is the wounded healer, it is the recovering addict that expresses compassion to another addict. It is the person who has walked a hard road and grown in grace that we find shows grace towards others. Our ultimate aim as Christians must be the pursuit of righteousness. That is the total right living with God, with others, through compassion, but also right living towards ourselves. Such a person will be truly satisfied. In their book, God is in the small stuff and it all matters, Bruce and Stan say the following when it comes to compassion. They say this, It is possible to be a generous person and still lack compassion for others. Isn't that interesting? Simply giving something away doesn't necessarily mean you have compassion for someone else. They say never make the mistake of equating generosity with compassion. If anything, a generous spirit flows from your compassion, not the other way around. True compassion, they say, means that you see people in the way that God sees them. It means looking into the hearts of those people that God, for one reason or another, brings into our lives and brings into this world. They all have one thing in common. They are loved equally by God, just as we are, who made them and us in his image. Anyone in need, whether they are in physical or spiritual need, is your neighbor. True compassion reaches out to our neighbors. And that true compassion comes from Jesus Christ as we pursue righteousness and as we pursue right living with him. Who is God calling us to show goodness and compassion to today? Who is he putting in your mind and heart? Let us pray. Gracious Lord Jesus, we ask you to transform us into your image of grace, of mercy, of goodness and compassion towards others and towards ourselves. Help us to pursue a life of righteousness 
regardless of the hardships we have faced or are facing. Show us how to live in such a way that is pleasing to you, kind to others, and beneficial to our own Christian growth. True fulfillment is only found in right relationship with you. Lord, where we have slipped and given way to the wrong things, speak to us and forgive us. Please set us on a path where our pain is turned into purpose and into good for ourselves and others, and where our joy and fulfillment is made complete as we seek your kingdom first. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to invite you to visit Living Faith Uniting Church in Karina Heights. You can get our address details off the website, which is showing on the video right now. We would love to meet you. Don't be afraid or hesitant if you've never been to a church before. Come and experience the love of God through His people and through His Holy Spirit. And if you're watching this online somewhere overseas outside of Australia, we invite you to let us know where you're watching from. We would love to pray for you. Have a blessed week.